It was like they were playing a college football game here. Everything inside the 20. Look at this play call. Nobody's guarding him. Ben Johnson, genius. Control of the NFC North division is up for grabs in this pivotal Week 9 matchup between Lions and Packers. Both teams come in riding winning streaks and managing injuries to their superstar players. Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Johnny Gaz. Thank you for returning for another video. The Lions now head to Lambeau to face the 6-2 and two Green Bay Packers in this Week 9 game. This is the Sunday game of the week, November 3rd. Kickoff will be at 425 on Fox. Let's go through my full game preview. We'll start with the headlines and storylines. I'll give you my X factors and best matchups. We'll look at the difference in the game. And at the end of the video, I will give my final prediction and score. So make sure to stick around. Let's go. Before we get into Lions and Pack, make sure to like the video if you dig the vibe here at Johnny Gaz Sports. I'd love it if you consider subscribing to the channel. We're just over 2,100 thanks to you guys. And if you hit that notify bell, you won't miss any future videos. There is a membership option available. I do my live game play-by-play -play reactions, tier list, highlight reviews, a ton of fun stuff. But there is always free content for you here. Make sure to comment down below, who do you have in this Week 9 NFC North matchup between Lions and Packers? What will be your final score? What a big game here in Week 9. Let's kick this off with the headlines and storylines from this week. Let's start on the Lions side, and I think we have to focus on the Jamison Williams situation. He is currently serving a two-game suspension for performance-enhancing substances. They now are reopening an investigation for an incident that occurred back in early October. He was pulled over with a friend. In that vehicle, they had two registered weapons. The issue now is whether or not he should have had a concealed permit for that weapon to be on him at the time. Now, I will not get into further details on the incident. Dan Campbell and the Lions organization did come out and say that Jamison Williams made them aware of the incident when it first occurred, and they will put all of the confidence and faith behind him to work through this on top of the fact that he is working through the two-game suspension. Trade rumors continue to swirl around the Detroit Lions as many folks believe that they still need to find additional help or bolster their defensive line specifically at edge after the loss of Aiden Hutchinson. I will inform you if I hear any solid actual news as far as the Lions making a move before the Tuesday 5th trade deadline. For right now, the Lions are standing pat as they head into this Week 9 matchup with Green Bay. Lions have also activated rookie guard Christian Mahogany from the NFI list. He had mononucleosis to start off the season and really did not get a full training camp. Now he has now worked himself back into football shape, and the Lions have confidence to now add him to the active roster. Another addition, nose tackle Broderick Martin also returned to practice this week. He is now on the 21-day practice window where the Lions will have to decide to add him to the active roster or put him back on season-ending injured reserve. In other injury notes for the Lions, Malcolm Rodriguez has not practiced on Wednesday or Thursday, the week of the Green Bay game. He is doubtful for this matchup. Josh Pascal, the defensive edge, also has an illness this week. He did not practice Wednesday or Thursday, and he has been deemed out for this game against the Green Bay Packers. Jared Goff, who had a noticeable limp towards the middle and end of the game there last week against Tennessee, did sit out Wednesday Wednesday's practice, but he was a full participant Thursday and is expected to be a full go against Green Bay. Lions enter this pivotal NFC North game, riding a five-game winning streak and the hottest offense in the NFL. They are first in points per game with 33.4. Their defense is certainly improving as they are now eighth in points allowed at 19.1. Now let's switch our headlines over to the Green Bay Packers. And I think the biggest story this week is the Jordan Love groin injury. Will he or will he not play against the Lions this weekend? He did not practice on Wednesday and was a limited participant Thursday, but word directly from Jordan Love himself, as well as the organization, all indications appear like he will play in this Week 9 matchup. However, if there are any complications or for any reason Jordan Love can't com complete this game, Green Bay does have all the faith in the world in backup Malik Willis, who has really held up well and stepped in when needed. It happened last week when Jordan Love went out with the groin injury. Willis was able to step in and lead them back into a comeback victory. He's been solid for them this season, and the Lions have to approach him differently if Willis is the quarterback versus Jordan Love. 
Also in the news for the Packers, rookie linebacker Edgerin Cooper received the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. He's been solid for the Packers so far on defense. On the season, he has 24 total tackles, two and a half sacks, and one forced fumble. The Packers also signed this week former first-round draft pick outside linebacker Jamin Davis, who was formerly with Washington where he had 36 starts. Green Bay looking to bolster the depth in their linebacker room and should be a good addition. For this game of the week matchup in Green Bay at Lambeau, the Packers have decided to wear their throwback 50-style classic uniforms for this game against the Lions. A few other injury notes for the Packers. Let's start with running back Josh Jacobs, who did leave the game against the Jaguars. He did not practice Wednesday, but was a full participant Thursday and is probable for this matchup with the Lions. On the offensive line, they do have some injuries to worry about. Center Josh Myers has an injured wrist. He did not practice both Wednesday and Thursday and is questionable. Also, left tackle Rashid Walker and left guard Elkin Jenkins also were uh, did not practice Wednesday. Both did return to practice on Thursday and are expected to play. Safety Evan Williams also has not practiced both Wednesday and Thursday and is doubtful for this matchup with the Lions. On top of that, cornerback Jair Alexander, who has a knee injury, did not practice Wednesday or Thursday, is also considered doubtful. Lastly, linebacker Quay Walker, who had been suffering with concussion-type symptoms, recovery from and within concussion protocol, appears to be on pace to return for this Week 9 matchup with the Lions. The Packers themselves will enter this game with the Lions on a four-game winning streak. They've won the last two games on last-second field goals. They are also riding a very good offense. They rank 6th in points per game scored and 11th in points allowed on defense. This should be a fantastic Week 9 NFC North matchup. Let's get into this game. Let's look at the key matchups between the Detroit Lions and Green Bay Packers for Week 9. I think the biggest matchup between these two teams will be the Lions secondary against the wide receiver weapons for the Green Bay Packers. And Green Bay runs four wide receivers deep. Maybe the best four wide receiver core in all of the NFL. I'm not saying any one of these individuals are at the top of this list, but as a combination of four wide receivers, it may be the best room here in the NFL. Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Dontavian Wicks. Three of those four all have over 40 targets on the season. So Green Bay, whether it be Jordan Love or Malik Willis, will spread the wealth to all of these weapons. Last week, the Lions gave up 10 catches for 143 yards to Kelvin Ridley, and a lot of that was early on in that Week 8 matchup against the Tennessee Titans. If they can't keep up with Kelvin Ridley, it's hard to think they're going to be able to contain all four of these wide receivers for the Packers. Lions typically run a man coverage scheme with a lot of safety help, and I think the two safeties will be very key in this matchup against the Packers. Both Kirby Joseph and Brian Branch, who have shown the ability to make plays all over the field, will have to be huge in this game against the Packers. Another key head-to-head in this game will be the Lions offensive line against the Packers front seven, specifically the pass protection, which has been shaky for the Lions here over the last several weeks. Over the last two games, the Lions have given up eight sacks, and we know Jared Goff and the efficiency level streak that he's riding right now. Jared has fumbled the football four times this season. The Lions have been able to recover All four. It seems like the more Jared Goff gets hit, the more likely he loses that football. The Lions will have to keep him clean to maintain this offensive efficiency. My third key matchup in Lions versus Packers is this Lions run game against this Packers run defense. Lions have proven they can run the ball early, often, and always upon the strength of this offensive line. And of course, Sonic and Knuckles, their two running backs, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. Last week against the Jaguars, the Green Bay Packers gave up 91 yards on 23 carries. That's a four-yard average, and Tank Bigsby did do some good things on the ground there in that matchup. Again, we know the strength that the Lions can bring to you for these running backs. Last week alone, Jameer Gibbs had a 70-yard touchdown run, and over the last two weeks, he's run for over 100 yards in each of those matchups. We know what David Montgomery brings to the table with his strength power, speed, and they seem to go to him early in these road games. Be on the lookout for the Lions run game in this matchup. 
The Green Bay Packers run defense is probably their weakest unit here across the board. So if the Lions are going to have success, they may have to lean on the run game in week nine. I also have to throw in there that depending on who the Green Bay Packers have at quarterback could be a key matchup here against the Lions. I actually believe that it would be a more favorable matchup if Jordan Love plays in this game. I know that's crazy to think about, but knowing that he's going to be a little bit hobbled, he's not at 100%, and he certainly has not been able to practice all week. Coming into this game with the Lions, I think that puts Detroit at an advantage as far as their pass rush, and they won't have to maintain the edges as hard as they would have if the Green Bay Packers end up starting or playing Malik Willis, who we know can make some things happen with his legs by extending plays. And I think at this point plays against the Lions defense a little bit better than Jordan Love. So a key matchup in this game could be the Lions defensive line, their edges against Malik Willis. We'll, again, keep our ears to the ground as we get a little bit closer to Sunday and we'll have to see how the Lions adjust. And now let me get you some of those players that I think will be X factors in this week nine game of the week between Lions and Packers. And I think you have to start with quarterback for the Lions, Jared Goff, who is on an historic streak right now as far as efficiency, passing, rating. I mean, you name it, Jared Goff is getting it done. And he's coming off a performance against Tennessee where he really didn't have to put up huge numbers, but he was certainly efficient. Right now, Jared Goff is second in the NFL in passer rating, just behind... Lamar Jackson. In his last five games, Jared Goff is at 83% completion rate, has 146.5% rating, which is the best in NFL history over any five-game stretch. For Green Bay, offensively, I think you have to look at the running game. Josh Jacobs, depending on what happens with the quarterback, they may need to lean on their run game, which in turn would mean more Josh Jacobs. And I think what the Lions showed last week as they, again, continue to fiddle around with what they do at the edge positions The run game defense has sort of fallen back just a little bit. So there will be opportunities for Green Bay and Josh Jacobs to get some things going on the ground. Uh, Over the season, he has 145 rush attempts for 667 yards. That's a 4.6 yard average. Pretty good. And he has three touchdowns on the season. The Lions last week gave up 158 rushing yards to the Tennessee Titans, which is the most they've given up all season. So again, there is opportunity there for Green Bay and Josh Jacobs. And on the defensive side of the football for the Lions, I think you got to look at a player like Brian Branch, who was a little bit quiet last week, had a few penalties called on him. But outside of that, he has been truly fantastic this season, almost all pro status. He is all over the field for the Lions, not only as that back safety, but also your strong safety that's able to come up, fill the hole, help you out in your run game. And he's just an overall playmaker. Yes, he was quiet last week, but that's even more of a reason why I expect him to be huge in this Week 9 game against the Packers. And let's stick with those safeties. On the Packers' side, they have an all-pro safety themselves in Xavier McKinney, who leads the league in interceptions with six. He has been truly fantastic for this Packers defense, a great addition, and he will be a factor in this game. If the Packers are going to hold down the Lions offense. Their back end in the secondary has to be strong. So they're going to have to lean on a guy like Xavier McKinney here in this game. And just a few more quick X factors. I think you have to look at the tight end for Green Bay, Tucker Kraft, who is quietly having a very good season. And if the Lions are susceptible anywhere, it may be in that short to mid-range defensive pass coverage. So a guy like Kraft could play a part. Over the season, he has 342 yards receiving and five touchdowns. And for the Lions, I have to mention David Montgomery. He just seems to come up so huge in these road games, especially when the Lions may fall into any sort of offensive funk, which has been almost non-existent here in the last five games. But before that, if you think back to weeks one, two, three, even week four, they leaned on David Montgomery in times where they couldn't get other things going. And I have a feeling in this case... Uh, a road game in Lambeau, midday, I really think they lean on their strength, which is the run game, and typically Monty to kick this thing off. So be on the lookout for Knuckles here in this matchup. And lastly, I have to mention Rashawn Gary, defensive lineman for the Green Bay Packers. Again, the shaky pass protection for the Lions has left Jared Goff susceptible, and a guy like Rashawn Gary has shown that he can get to Jared Goff and the Lions. In the last matchup alone, he had three sacks and a forced fumble. The difference in this huge Week 9 game between Detroit and Green Bay, I believe, will be the Lions' clean and efficient offense continuing to soar. 
The Lions have proven that they can beat you in so many ways, and they have weapons all over the field offensively. They've played good defenses the last several weeks, Minnesota and Tennessee, and have put up historical points in offensive numbers. Jared Goff is playing the best football of his career, and I just don't see Green Bay holding them down. Now, the best way to beat the Lions, obviously they need to put them in longer fields, and you have to get to Jared Goff early and often. That is the best way that you can keep this Lions offense at bay. Hopefully in doing so, Green Bay would be able to put up enough points to keep themselves in this matchup. But right now, I think the Lions offense is the best in football. I think their defense is doing enough and have been opportunistic making plays to be able to win this football game. On top of that, Green Bay has really leaned on the fact that they have been able to create turnovers. They actually lead the league the NFL with 19 total takeaways so far this season. On the other side, Detroit is plus 10 in turnover differential. They really don't give up the ball much. So that, I think, really is the ultimate difference in this Week 9 game. The line on this game is currently set at Lions minus 3.5, and and the over-under is at 48.5 points. As I mentioned, I think the ultimate difference in this game is the Lions offense. I believe they can control this matchup and ultimately score points to where they put this thing away. Their defense should be able to do enough to hold the Packers at bay, and I have the Lions winning this football game 32-24. to That would move the Lions to 7-1 and and would drop the Packers to 6-3. and That will do it for my Week 9 game preview. Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, who do you have? In this pivotal NFC North matchup, who will take control of the NFC North as we get into the second half of the season? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure to hit that like button. It's the best free way to help out the channel. I'd also love it if you consider subscribing. We're just over 2,100 thanks to you guys. And if you hit the notify bell, you won't miss any future videos. There's a little blue join button on all my videos there. If you hit that, I'll walk you through how you can become a part of the family more than anything else. Make sure to take care of yourself and your mental health. That's the most important thing. And I want to make sure you come back and see me on future videos. Thank you guys so much for your time. Have a great weekend. Go Lions.